Um, hello, everybody. Um, my name is uh, Philip from England, and I'm a UK native uh, speaker, and I've been teaching English online uh, for uh, many years. Um, if you have a question, or, or I started actually uh, nearly 13 years ago. Um, if you have a question about learning English, um, please um, feel welcome to uh, ask it, um, and um, um, and I, I specialize in teaching the IELTS primarily, as well as business English, etc. This is a free webinar, and um, also I teach private classes as well, um, and I specialize in grammar and business English, etc. Um, if you have a um, if you have a uh, question uh, you would like to ask. Um, you can just write it in the uh, chat window, um, and I will uh, try my best to answer it. And um, okay, well, we're just going to start. And uh, so, what I will do is maybe just speak about the IELTS exam, um, and at the same time, I'm just going to be sharing this with uh, some groups. Um, so the IELTS exam is um, one of the uh, most popular English exams in the world, uh, most likely. Um, in terms of numbers, probably the American uh, TOEFL exam is probably more popular, um, but um, uh, probably the, um, the IELTS exam is um, uh, you know, very popular. I'm not sure if it's number two in the world or whatever um, for independent English exams. Obviously, not uh, talking about for a uh, school exam. Um, uh, for the um, uh, IELTS exam, there are uh, four uh, sections. Um, the first uh, uh, section is writing. Uh, the next section is reading. Um, there is, uh, and also uh, there is um, a, li a listening section as well, and a speaking section. Um, there is no specific grammar section for the IELTS, um, and uh, the writing section is is has two tasks. The first task. Um, uh, one is to write minimum 150 words, and the uh, second task is to write uh, minimum 250 words. Um, the type of questions that you'll get will vary according to if you are taking the academic or the uh, general exam. For the academic and general, the task two, from what I've heard from other teachers and, and you know, example answers or anything like that, uh, will be relatively uh, similar, although the um, type of question for the essay for task two is going to be a bit more academic. Uh, for the task one, it'll be very different. Because uh, the task one academic uh, is uh, writing a uh, report about charts or um, you know maps or things like that or a flow chart um, or graphs or etc. Um, and uh, for the uh, general, it's going to be um, a uh, letter. Um, there is also a new feature of the exam recently, um, which I'm not sure has maybe been around uh, coming in maybe a couple of years coming to mainstream. I'm not quite sure exactly um, how long, uh, which is a um, that there is now an option in uh, some countries and uh, some locations within some countries, maybe not all locations uh, currently um, within a country offering it to actually um, use a, uh, a computer when you are uh, doing the IELTS uh, writing and uh, other sections. Um, and um, 
uh, from what I've heard recently from uh, one student, actually, uh, was that all the sections are on the computer. I'm not sure about that, but uh, yes, I'm a little bit not uh, so familiar with that. Uh, but uh, I have come into contact with students for about a year or so who've been taking it on the computer and so on. Um, but in any case, um, uh, so for the writing now, um, you can then use a computer in some countries, you know, for example, Australia, or at least some some locations in the UK. Uh, probably it's going to be London more uh, than uh, other locations. Um, so that's something quite useful to think about. Um, although for the reading section, um, I do quite like the idea of um, using paper to kind of mark the paper. Um, and um, so I'm not exactly familiar how different the paper exam is, is going to be to the, to the computer. Uh, but in terms of making notes, but um, um, but for example, one of my students recently, um, uh, who's going to take the reading exam, um, I recommended you know to try and get no paper from the uh, exam centre when you go in there to make notes. It may just be more helpful. Anyway, so yes, I'm still learning about that, and uh, probably need, need to learn a bit more about this uh, uh, computer style of exam. Um, anyway, uh, so now if you're taking the uh, paper uh, exam, it's very important to make sure that uh, you are writing clearly. Um, because if you're not writing uh, clearly, if they can't read your writing, um, then um, it's, um, it's not, you know, going to be uh, possible for them to grade it as well as as highly as they as they might wish. Um, you know, if a if letters are illegible or words even are illegible, and that may not be uh, so useful clearly for the grade you're trying to get. So it's very important to make sure your writing is clear. One of my students, I've uh, been teaching online for the IELTS for uh, sort of about thirteen years ago. I came up to 13 years ago, um, and one of the students, maybe five years ago or so, uh, they um, uh, had they had taken the they were from Russia, and they had uh, taken the IELTS in Russia, um, and actually got a six, and they had very good speaking, uh, from, or pretty good speaking, and so on uh, when I spoke to them, um, and uh, so anyway, they were kind of not very happy. Uh, about that, and uh, so, um, and they said to me, you know, what's what's going on here? Uh, how come they um, how come they're not they they weren't uh, getting a, a, as high a grade as they would wish? Um, so um, I was trying to figure it out, and then finally I said to them, well, let me check your handwriting. And um, hopefully they wouldn't mind me saying that I won't say you know, who it was. Obviously, um, hopefully they won't, won't they won't mind me saying that their handwriting was very much illegible, um, and even to get a six was quite surprising. Anyway, so I said to them, you know, just focus uh, on the handwriting a lot as well as other tips, and they weren't quite sure about it, but they said, okay, I'll just see what see see what happens. Uh, take your advice and see what happens. And then, actually, after um, um, uh, after a month, uh, they went from six to eight uh, for writing. Um, so it, it can, you know, certainly uh, be possibly uh, um, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, so yes, yeah, so it's very uh, useful to. Um, uh, to um, uh, try to um, you know be, be careful about uh, you know uh, your uh, handwriting for the IELTS to make sure that they don't uh, mark you down uh, if if uh, if it's not legible. And also another thing um, for people who are um, using um, uh, handwriting, um, uh, 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 paper and pen or uh, pencil and pen. In fact, you can also use. Um, try to practice as well because um, a lot of people are out of practice from school, you know, especially adults uh, who maybe, uh, you know, haven't really used uh, pen and paper, they just use a computer in their work, you know, for maybe quite a, some years or whatever. 
So also just work on the speed for the IELTS exam um, to uh, be able to um, write at a reasonable uh, speed. Okay, um, so I'm just um, sharing this, sorry if you hear me clicking away, I'm just um, sharing this uh, in some groups at the moment. Um, and um, okay, so um, and um, there are many tips I can actually give for uh, speaking and so on. Um, anyway, the um, another thing to um, uh, to uh, uh, say about the uh, IELTS uh, um, uh, uh, speaking, uh, or let's go on to speaking perhaps, is uh, that um, uh, for the uh, IELTS uh, uh, speaking, try not to speak too fast. Um, it may be tempting to think that. If you speak very fast, then that's going to, you know, impress the examiner. Uh, however, um, if you just speak very fast, then that may just end up making lots of errors at a high speed, essentially, which clearly you wouldn't want to do. So um, when you are speaking, um, just try to speak at a moderate speed. And also try not to, of course, you don't want it to seem as though you're delaying or hesitating too much, but try not to rush into an answer so that um, if you are um, uh, speaking, um, then um, you can kind of think about what you're going to say before you start speaking. So try not to rush into immediately giving an answer. Now, one thing that can be quite useful in this regard is to, and I've actually made e -course, paid e-courses which are uh, available for private students, is uh, try to um, think of some set answers that you can give. Um, so when um, you are think, you know, you can you can think of an expression or, or one of the uh, set on uh, one of the phrases um, um, that I have that I've made in my paid e courses, which are available for private students, is is something like uh, personally my opinion is, or you know, all these kinds of things. Um, so uh, yes, try to learn um, uh, some set answers so that uh, you can um, uh, try to um, uh, you know not um, uh, you, you can try to. Uh, not rush into um, a, an answer, and then when you're or have to rush, you know, think of how you're going to start and then start speaking at the same time. Um, so I just say uh, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome, everybody who's here. Um, if you have a question uh, that you would like to ask, uh, please uh, feel welcome. And uh, my name is Philip from England. And uh, I also have uh, private paid classes if anyone is interested, or even I do email correction as well. Uh, but the webinar is free. So if you do have a question uh, you would like to ask, uh, please go ahead and ask. And uh, I specialize in teaching the IELTS exam. I first started teaching it online, <coughs> online about 13 years ago, in January 2007. Um, and also I uh, have a uh, I was a teacher offline from uh, started in 1996, so coming up to uh, coming up to about 24 years ago, I first started teaching English, not continuously, of course. Um, um, so anyway, I'm, um, and I, I'm a native speaker from the UK, from England, and I specialise in uh, uh, the IELTS exam, and also I have uh, much experience teaching grammar as well. So if you do have a question, um, uh, you can ask. Uh, or anybody who is coming to a future webinar, you can ask. Right, um, so carrying on with the IELTS, um, one thing that's very useful to do is just to become uh, familiar with the uh, types of uh, questions you may have. Um, so um, uh, try to uh, think about uh, the, uh, 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 for the reading, uh, try to uh, have a look at uh, the uh, different uh, uh, question types you may have. Um, you can do that from practice, um, and that can be quite useful. Um, 
Okay, um, what else can I say? Uh, there are very many things to do. Um, for the reading and listening, um, careful about um, uh, making sure there are no spelling errors. Um, a spelling error, even if it's the correct answer, you know, for example, for, for a reading question or a listening question, is an error. So definitely you don't want to do that. Um, and again, make sure your handwriting is clear. Uh, follow the instructions carefully. If it says three words in a number, don't write four words in a number. Um, and um, um, for the, in fact, for the reading listening exam, uh, certainly when you're not using a computer exam, it's uh, you use a pencil. Uh, however, for the uh, writing exam, you do have the option if you if you're not using a computer to um, uh, to uh, uh, use a, um, a, um, a a pen rather. However, uh, from what I heard uh, last time I checked, uh, half a year ago, whatever, uh, for the uh, uh, for the writing exam, you can use an eraser uh, if you're using a, a pencil, uh, but uh, you can't uh, use ink corrector. Um, so uh, that's something to uh, think about. Okay. Um, so um, another thing for the IELTS exam, um, uh, for the uh, listening exam, actually uh, from having started teaching the IELTS online uh, from about 13 years ago, um, there are very many uh, tips really proportionately uh, uh, um, in proportion, so, so in relation certainly to the other sections that are, that are possible to give. Um, so for the uh, listening exam, you know, um, of course, uh, just make sure you understand the question types, do lots of practice. Again, that goes for the reading. Um, so, um, and um, uh, one, one thing just to say, actually, uh, I have over the years uh, heard from one or more students um, that, uh, or one or more IELTS candidates, uh, that um, they couldn't hear very clearly uh, the audio when they were in the, uh, uh, in the test center. Uh, so, uh, therefore, uh, you know, try to um, uh, make sure that if you can't hear, just uh, let the exam uh, let the examiner know, and you know, ask to be relocated or something like that. Or if, uh, or if, or if for example, you didn't do that uh, immediately after the exam, uh, go and tell the examiner, uh, you know, that there's been an issue, couldn't hear it, uh, or something like that. So you know, potentially you can get a um, a reset uh, for free, or or at least if the you know if your grade wasn't sufficient. Uh, Obviously, it's better to say before the exam's really get, getting going. Uh, but if, um, um, uh, but but at least you know you may have some uh, option to uh, get a reset or a regrade or something like that potentially. Uh, although I'm not quite sure if you wait till after the exam you say an issue. They're, 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 what they're going to say? They may just say then we'll wait for the grade perhaps and uh, take it from there. So I'm not sure if there's a how much. But anyway, so if you can't hear uh, during the exam, just immediately say something. You've got to say something because. Otherwise, you, you may just fail because you can't hear the questions clearly. You may pass, but who knows? Um, for the um, uh, maybe go back uh, to the uh, to the uh, writing uh, section. Um, for the writing section, try to uh, become familiar with the uh, types of uh, with, with the uh, grading uh, classifications, uh, how they how they grade the exam. Um, so uh, you can actually Google for um, IELTS uh, writing. Uh, band descriptors, and it's going to be, and then um, it'll it'll come up, uh, uh, you know, at the top uh, for one and two. I think actually there may be a PDF which is combined with both. Um, last time I, uh, one time I checked, but anyway, uh, so you can maybe just uh, see I'm searching here on my uh, computer, and uh, then uh, there are uh, PDFs uh, where uh, you can see it. I think one of the PDFs actually I've seen uh, online actually has an error. Um, it may say uh, coherence, cohesion twice, or lexical resource twice, or something. But uh, anyway, um, so as you notice, actually the um, the task, uh, the well, uh, as you'll hear if you can't probably read, read my screen uh, from the from the angle. Um, but uh, um, yes, yeah, so anyway, the, um, the the grading classifications for the writing are the same for both uh, the task one and the task two. Uh, task achievement, uh, coherence, cohesion, lexical resource, and grammar range and uh, and uh, accuracy. Um, 
and uh, so just become familiar with the types of uh, with the type of grading uh, for the uh, exam um, and uh, so that that is something to uh, bear in mind um, um, to, to think how to realize how they grade it. Of course, as I as I mentioned, and just to emphasize, if they can't read your writing, uh, then you may just decrease the grade automatically anyway. Um, so uh, that would uh, clearly not uh, be helpful. So um, uh, yes, yeah, so you've got the task achievement, coherence, cohesion, uh, lexical resource in terms of vocabulary and grammar range. So bear in mind also that uh, the grade you need uh, will also reflect how complex and how varied uh, you know the grammar needs to be and also the vocabulary one thing is uh, I always recommend and um, and um, you know I've heard from another uh, from, from a well-known IS teacher online also and maybe more uh, at least one uh, is uh, that uh, you really want to avoid repeating their vocabulary uh, as far as I read them also saying um, so it, so what I normally recommend students to do is uh, just um, that I'm teaching is just before you start actually writing the answer, uh, get the keywords that they've uh, written in the in the question, and then uh, make synonyms for those, so that uh, you are not repeating their vocabulary. Uh, if you repeat their vocabulary, clearly, uh, you know this is this is not uh, going to uh, be um, uh, helpful for the grade most likely, uh, from what I've heard. Um, you, you know, there's all kinds of stories out there. Uh, one thing I've, uh, one thing I heard basically was that they don't grade uh, the words that they've written. If you write them now, whether you can write it one time and they grade, I don't know. You know, uh, because I've never been an examiner myself, although I taught the arts exam online for many years. Um, so, but anyway, so I just generally teach students to uh, make synonyms of the question vocabulary and then. Uh, to uh, use those, and you can okay to repeat your vocabulary, you know, maybe a couple of times or whatever. And sometimes you need to repeat their vocabulary, but just try and minimize that. Um, another thing I, I quite like and uh, to do, and uh, actually at university I studied English, you know, I have a background in, as well as being a native speaker. I, I, I studied literature, a major and additional minor in uh, creative writing. Um, so, um, uh, so, so uh, uh, therefore, uh, I, I don't really like starting sentences with basic words like a and the. I know that on the you know IELTS official website, uh, materials or other well-known one or more other well-known um, uh, IELTS teachers, uh, they may recommend starting. You know, they may just start a sentence with a and or the. Uh, but I think that really that's a very basic way of writing. Uh, so probably it's just best to avoid doing that. Um, all right, so just introduce myself. Uh, hello, uh, anyone who is listening. Uh, my name is Philip from England. And uh, if uh, you would uh, like to ask a question, uh, if this is a free webinar, and you can just ask a question and uh, write it, um, and I will uh, do my best to answer any questions anyone has. Uh, kind of a little bit unusual time. Uh, it's quite early in the morning in the UK. Um, and I was going to do this last night, actually. Didn't, uh, didn't manage to do it last night, so I thought, well, I'm going to do a webinar then this morning. Um, okay, and uh, please do like my Facebook page as well if you would like to follow that. Um, and uh, I am a, um, uh, my, my, I, I do work also uh, as an online English teacher. This is my job. My website is actually onlineenglishteacher.com. Um, I'll write that as well. So you can like my Facebook page and um, uh, also um, you can visit the website if you uh, as well and um, and I teach uh, private classes as well uh, for payment online if anyone is interested in that uh, please uh, feel welcome to uh, get in touch about this okay um, oh, sorry the uh, the first uh, link um, I wrote I'm gonna have to rewrite that as uh, missing a few letters or something um, okay um, so um, I'll try and delete that. Oh, I could have edited that. Um, okay, so um, going back to the IELTS, um, try not to um, have too little time uh, before the exam. You know, you don't want to be rushed in your preparation. Uh, so, you know, it, it may take weeks, it take, may take months. Maybe you don't have time, you just want to take the exam very quickly because of immigration requirements or something like this. 
Um, I have helped students even pass perhaps in one day, increase their grade in one day, just three hours or something. They 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 said, you know, one or more have said. Uh, so uh, yes, um, so just uh, trying to give yourself as much time as possible to not rush. You know, you don't, you know, and because uh, the ads can also be a lot of pressure. Uh, but even if you can give yourself a long time, such as half a year, uh, that can be very helpful. So you're not rushing. And um, uh, what else I recommend is uh, try to uh, not um, uh, try not to um, uh, um, uh, uh, yes, yeah, so try not to focus just on one area. I, I generally say, um, you know, try and make it holistic. Uh, study so you're sort of focusing on uh, lots of uh, on all the different areas not just focusing on writing and things like that um, and especially uh, be aware of that um, sometimes you know your progress may be slower so probably it's better to try and you know study more than you may need to as an average at the beginning and uh, then uh, and therefore um, you you'll have time in hand to try to improve uh, if if it's required you know if you if you need to if you need to do that uh so um uh yes yeah, so so just be careful about doing that um and um the other uh thing about the ielts is you know there's maybe a lot of useful resources on the internet um just be aware you know that some people say there's there's so much you know to, to learn and so on so try not to overwhelm yourself now because it's such a popular exam <clears throat> last time i heard it was coming up to you know maybe something like three million uh, exams a year uh, or something like that so uh taken and maybe it's you know who knows what that that was maybe a couple of years ago or something like that so who knows what uh, uh it will now be uh so try not to you know try not to uh, overwhelm yourself, you know, as it were, with uh, all all kinds of information out there. Um, I mean, even sometimes, you know, maybe people have different recommendations and things like that. So, um, but also remember that uh, there's no, not necessarily a, always a right or wrong way. Um, I, I quite like using IAS Liz's style uh, for the task one uh, for writing academic, uh, for academic writing. Uh, for example, um, but there's, you know, but it doesn't, of course, say on the IELTS official website, so you must only use this style or, you know, uh, you can't kind of get a high grade or something like that. So, you know, in theory, not anyway. <clears throat> um, if you, um, let's see, we're just coming up uh, to uh, a couple of minutes left, um, perhaps. And uh, so if you, um, if you fail the exam, it's uh, very important to, try and identify the issues that you are having. Uh, you know, I have heard of some exam uh, 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 candidates taking the exam repeatedly, you know, a large amount of times. And obviously, if they're not really aware of what's going wrong, you know, or anything in life, if you're not aware of what's going wrong, if you just repeat the same issues, uh, then you may just get the same result, you know, quite likely. Um, so try not to, uh, so try to identify uh, what might be uh, going wrong uh, if there are any issues, and uh, then uh, you, you know you can uh, try to uh, not uh, repeat them, uh, such as for example if you had lots of grammar issues or your handwriting was terrible or things like that, um, and so on. Right, there are many other uh, tips uh, I could give, um, and uh, so um, um, anyway, if you, uh, please uh, do follow me on Facebook and uh, see if you want to. You know, try and get notified of uh, any um, uh, webinars or uh, maybe watch them again afterwards. And um, and uh, if anyone's interested in uh, private uh, study, I do teach privately online as well as uh, I have uh, other free resources like a free ebook uh, as well. And uh, I'll just um, uh, give a link to that, um, and, uh, which is over 100 tips uh, for uh, the IELTS. Uh, so if anyone's interested in that, uh, here is the the link for that um, and uh, yeah so um, uh, so that's that's all uh, about that uh, uh, but, uh, for the moment and uh, for, uh, for you know there's also a free uh, other free resources actually on the website as well on that website uh, but anyway um, so there are also free resources or various amounts and free forums and so on and then also I have um, uh, praise uh, paid services excuse me uh, 
such as um, uh, online classes by Skype or Zoom and also email correction. So uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for um, anyone who is attending or um, for anyone listening again. And I wish you all success in your IELTS exam.